Hi everyone, welcome to Chef Travels. I'm Kevin Harrington and today we are in for a little treat. Um, I'm gonna be cooking an authentic chicken curry, Indian style, but there's a little twist. We're not gonna be using any curry powder. Nope, not a single bag of curry powder in sight. Reason why, I will tell you later on. But for now, let's get this show on the go. So what we've got is some rice soaking away here that's been soaking for about half hour. Some ghee, which is basically clarified butter. I love to use ghee because A, I love the flavor and B, I love the way that you can get it as hot as you like. Um, you can use olive oil or whatever you want to use, but I'm going to use ghee today because I prefer that. Uh, some double cream, a uh, pot for all your waste, a tub full of spoons, teaspoons, a pot full of teaspoons. I'm going to tell you what that's for later on, but every kitchen should have one. Um, some freshly diced chicken. And here we've got some uh, ground spices. So we've got some cumin, some turmeric, some chili powder, um, some garam masala and some fennel seed, all crushed. And here we have our whole spices. Um, the reason I've got whole spices and uh, powder spices separate, again, I shall enlighten you later on as we go along. Um, here we've got some cumin seeds, some fennel seeds, some mustard seeds, some um, cardamom seeds. Again, the cardamom seeds, I tend to pop them first of all before I put them in. Although I put them in whole, I do crack them, so it's because I love the seed flavor and that comes out more when you crack the pods. And some bay leaf. Um, I've also got some fresh garlic, fresh ginger, fresh coriander, and some lovely fresh bird's eye chilies. Uh, you can use Scotch bonnet. I do like the flavor of Scotch bonnet, but today I'm going to be using these little bird's eye chilies because I like them too. Um, some freshly chopped onion and some freshly cut chopped tomatoes. Now I did cut this chicken up earlier on and you probably see some skin in there as well. I like to leave the skin on because I find it's got a lovely, it gives the curry a lovely flavor and it also keeps the, the, the chicken moist rather than getting it all dried out and everything. And over here, I've taken the bones out and I've put them on to make a little stock. So without further ado, let's get cooking. So first things first, always good to turn the gas on. Get your pan nice and hot. Make sure the handles are all on the outside, otherwise they tend to burn and make a horrible rubbery smell, which is what we want. First thing we're going to do, take some ghee. Put your ghee in the pan. There's no actually measured quantities or anything, it's just pretty much um, a guess. If you'd like to find the measurements, please feel free to go back, go to our website, cheftravels.com, uh, where you will find a lot more uh, recipes, products, ingredients, anything you basically need to keep your kitchen running sweet. Um, so the next thing we do, is just wait for that ghee to get pretty hot. It takes a couple of minutes. So, the ghee's got pretty hot now. What we're gonna do, put our spices in seeds basically first of all the whole spices what we want them to do is get pretty hot as soon as they start crackling and start popping we know it's ready to start adding the rest of the ingredients there's lots of ways you can do this you can also put them in the oven first of all bake them get that flavor out then grind them so many different ways i love this way you're keeping the whole flavor of everything um, and uh, yeah you're getting the, you're getting the full glory so to speak Already, I can already smell those lovely flavours coming out. It's just such a, a sensation to the nostrils, basically. You know, it's, it's this magic happening in the pan. So, right, all those herbs, all those uh, spices have started popping. It's time to put the onions in. So what we want to do with these onions, we want them to brown because. They have a completely different flavour when they're brown. Um, they bring out like a sweetness. Um, it, it, it's just a completely different flavour. If you don't brown them off, you won't get 
the, you know, the, the end effect that you're looking for, that we're looking for. So, basically, why are we cooking a curry without curry powder? It all happened one day, when I was walking down Kilburn High Street, I came across this little Indian shop, authentic little Indian shop, and for many years I've been trying to make curry, but um, using curry powder. And I wasn't getting that, um, you know, the taste or the flavour that you get when you go to an Indian restaurant or go to an Indian person's house, it smells, you just smell that curry. Well, I wasn't getting that with curry powder, basically. Um, it wasn't having the right effect. I thought there's something missing. And um, maybe they're keeping a secret from us that they don't want to tell us. So I saw this little Indian shop and I thought, right, today I'm going to go in and ask that man what he would you. I mean, you can find 100 packets of different kinds of curry powder. And I want to find out which one they use that makes that authentic Indian curry. So I went to the old man sitting behind the counter, nice old chap he was. And I said, listen, mate, why don't you do me a favour? Could you tell me if you were making a curry... What curry powder would you use? And he sort of looked at me with like a sheepish smile. And I thought, he's not very happy about this. And then he smiled, leaned over to my ear and whispered to me, we don't use curry powder. <laughs> well, <laughs> that pretty much got my mind thinking, if you don't use curry powder, what do you use? Well, it's quite obvious what they use. They used the spices. Curry powder was actually something that um, came over from India when they got their independence because it was basically started sending all the spices over, but general housewife didn't know how to use the spices. And also, being lazy Brits as we are, we want everything in one package deal. So what they decided to do, grind all the spices up, bag them in a bag and call it curry powder. And it's been the same ever since. But True authentic Indian curries, they don't actually use curry powder. They might use a garam masala, which I've got a little bit of here, which again is some ground up spices. But basically speaking, um, the flavour you're going to get from just fantastic natural spices um, is good enough. You don't need a curry powder. And the thing with curry powder is you get that distinct curry powder taste as well, which it is all right if you go around someone's house and having a party and you can see all they've done is bung a bit of meat in a pan and put some curry powder with it. Well, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. To get that authentic, nice, or authentic taste, um, you've got to use the natural ingredients. When we've got this one on the go, I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect rice. Not a lot of people know this, and I've seen some real mess ups with rice that comes out looking like stodgy rice pudding rather than nice loose grain rice. So basically I've had this basmati rice, I've soaked it for about half hour. You also need to wash it for about four or five times just to get that starchy out of it. And when you see the water sort of clear, that's good enough to start using. So what we're doing now on our videos is we're gonna have a little foodie question for you. Today's question is, what two spices do you get from the same nut? It's not a competition, there's no prizes, just a bit of fun. There is actually a clue, there's a clue in the question. So please feel free, leave comments below um, don't forget to give me a cheeky little thumbs up if you'd be so kind, really appreciate it. Subscribe or even ring the bell if you want to see some more of my videos. Um, so basically, if you go to Chef's Travels, the answers will be there. Chef'sTravels.com, I'm not going to tell you the answer, you need to go there. So anyway, without further ado, back, on to, back over here. Now our onions have got that lovely golden brown colour which is absolutely fantastic. We don't want to take them any further than that because I don't want that burnt flavour. So what we're going to do now is put all our fresh spices, fresh garlic, ginger, coriander, and uh, 
all our chilies in there. That all goes in there like that. Next goes in our tomatoes. And again, give that a little stir. Now we're going to put in all our spices. Coriander, cumin, chilli powder. Again, there's no measurement, it's about a tablespoon of each. Um, be careful on the chilli powder, I like it hot, so I've got a fair amount in there. But, you know, use it to your discretion. And also, depending on the kind of chilies you're using, if you're using Scotch bonnet, you're going to need to use a lot less than what I've just used because they are absolutely hot. So that's coming on a treat now. Keep stirring it because you don't want it to stick. You don't want it to start burning on the bottom. I've got it on a very high heat. I love cooking on a high heat because I like food to cook fast. Next thing I'm going to do is put my chicken bits in. That all goes in there like that. Bit of salt, fresh ground pepper, lovely. Absolutely marvellous. Can't beat fresh ground pepper. Now give that a little stir. And the aroma and the flavour is coming off that now. Oh. You weren't hungry before, you will be now. I'm starting to catch a little bit at the bottom, so I'm going to take a bit of this stock. Just help loosen it up a little bit. That's coming on a treat, smelling absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see, we haven't used any curry powder whatsoever. Lots of lovely fresh spices whole spices, ground spices, herbs, chilli, garlic, ginger, all these lovely little things, they all create enough flavour not to need curry powder. Now, earlier on, I showed you something and told you I'd tell you what it's for later on. A pot of teaspoons. Why would I want a pot of teaspoons? I'll tell you why, because there is an etiquette to tasting food you need to taste food as it goes on through its stages. Each stage, checking it, make sure the seasoning's right, make sure it's cooking right. What a lot of chefs do is come along and stick their finger in it and go like that, and it's like, mate, you know, where's that finger been? That's absolutely out of order, you just don't do that. So the next culprit comes along and they sort of got it half right, they get a spoon and then they take some and they taste it actually over the pot. The reason they're tasting it over the pot is just in case they dribble. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Great, why not dribble in the pot that everyone else is going to? If you're cooking for yourself, I suppose that's all right, but other people involved, get yourself a teaspoon, give it a little stir, with another spoon, preferably. Take your teaspoon, taste it. Teaspoon finished it, get rid of it. Plenty more, fresh ones, always use a fresh one. That is hot, but fantastic. I love it hot. And that is gonna simmer on a low heat for about another 45 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get the gas on for the rice. Turn the gas down at the back because we just want it simmering, we don't want it to cook too much. We don't want it to burn, basically. So I've got water on for the rice. Now I've pretty much filled it halfway up through the pan. Now I am gonna season the water with some salt, even though halfway through, I'm going to wash the rice. Basically, I want the flavor of the salt to get absorbed into the rice, and the only way you're gonna do that is by cooking it with seasoning. So with that, in goes the rice. 
as I say, there's no exact measurements, just make sure there's a lot of water. Um, the rice is going to expand, obviously. And at this stage, the closest I've worked out averagely is once the rice is in, and give it a little stir just to make sure there's none stuck on the bottom. Don't play with it too much because it will break. Or rice does actually break and you'll end up with little bits which you want the nice little long bits. And what we're going to do is leave that to cook. Come to the boil. We're looking at approximately eight minutes at this stage. That is done. And you take it off straight away. It's still a little bit hard in the middle. Put the pot back on the heat. Get a little bit more ghee. Put a little bit in the bottom. Basically, put some in the bottom just to stop the rice sticking. Rice goes in. Put a couple of knobs of key on top, like so. Take your saffron. Put a little bit of hot water in it. So basically what we want to do is just put a little bit there in light little lumps. So that when it's ready, you we'll stir it. You can use food colouring. You want to put a drop of food colouring and little dots and just leave it basically. Um, and then at the end, stir it and you're going to have your basically rain, what they call rainbow rice. Um, I'm not using food colouring today. Put the cloth over the top, be careful you don't burn the edges, and put the lid on it. This rice is turned down right low now. Be careful doing this because if you leave the edges over the pot, they'll probably catch fire. And you don't really want that, and I'm not going to be happy that you've burned all her kitchen cloths. So basically, that gets left like that for the next 20 minutes. And what you're doing is you're carrying on cooking the rice, but steaming it. And the reason you put the cloth there is to catch the steam so that it doesn't dribble back down into the pot because you're trying to get rid of the water. Um, why not just leave it open? Well, if you leave it open, it's not going to have that steaming effect. And you really need that steaming effect to dry the rice out. And the reason we did it the way we've done it is to get as much starch out as possible because it's the starch that's gonna make it sticky. Um, we've managed to do that as best as we can. But again, you've got to make sure when you get it to this stage, it's al dente and not soft and soggy. If it's soft and soggy, you've passed it and it won't be any good. Throw it in the bin, start again, or give the dogs. Dogs like rice and chicken. That's good for them as well. That is the rice pretty much done. Give it another 20 minutes and then you can take it off and give it a little stir and serve it. Whereas the curry still has a little bit more to go. Coming to the final stages, tasting all the time, it's tasting good. In fact, it's not tasting good tasting really good. So at that stage, we take our double cream. Again, we can use double cream. Some people use uh, Greek yogurt, natural Greek yogurt though. Um, some people use coconut milk. I'm gonna use double cream today. Put about half a can of that in. Just let that cook out. A 
little last taste for seasoning. Wow. Basically, as you can see, look at that. Fantastic, fluffy rice. Just don't get any more fluffy than that. See? Great simple, great rice. I'm actually serving the rice in a tagine pot. Not for any other reason by the fact that I just think it looks nice in the tagine pot. But as you can see, look at that. Lovely, fluffy rice. Nothing stodgy whatsoever. And the other beautiful thing about it is, where, where it's still hot, it is actually still steaming. It's still steaming off. So it's actually still cooking. That's why you can only have it al dente when you get to the middle part, because um, it is actually still cooking. Um, the process still goes on. And the more it cooks, the fluffier it gets. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is my take on an authentic Indian chicken curry um, without any curry powder. Yeah.